do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. It's a very light note to start a video on, especially given the circumstances here in the U.S., with the pandemic's death toll nearing 100,000. I'm hoping this video is helpful in understanding how to manage fear related to being aware of death. So today's topic is going to be terror management theory. Terror management theory is exactly what it sounds like. It's a theory about how we manage our terror. Though it didn't start out that way, it spurred from investigations into self-esteem. Researchers noticed how influential self-esteem was for many aspects of behavior, and this led researchers to the question of why self-esteem is so important. Luckily, there was some guy named Ernest Becker who wrote a book called Denial of Death which offered a pretty substantial answer. Self-esteem is important because it helps stave off anxiety from thinking about death. Many people accepted this theory and used it as a jumping off point for future research, but this isn't the only theory of self-esteem. Self-determination theory and sociometer theory are other competing theories about the function of self-esteem, but we'll focus on terror management theory's explanation and research. There are criticisms of terror management theory, or TMT, but it's one of the main models we use today, and research based off the theory's premises has come up with some interesting outcomes. We are unique creatures in the fact that we know that we will die. Our cognitive capacities for language, planning, and self-awareness have given us significant advantages over almost every other creature. The price we pay is the ability to imagine the end of our individual experience and the inevitability of death. There are costs to this awareness. For instance, imagine you're working as a factory worker and every hour you hear something like this over the intercom. Someone please pick up the box by loading Doc B. Death is coming for all of us, and we don't know when. Do it as quickly as possible, because we don't know if one of you is next, and we can't afford it if one of our trucks leaves behind another shipment. Do you imagine this impacting productivity at all? Obviously. That's why it's important to make sure the boxes are in the right place to begin with. Now think about how a server at a restaurant needs to maintain perfect decorum while dealing with their guests. And imagine that at the same time, they're also aware that there is a high chance that someone in that restaurant could kill them. Imagine having to work in those conditions. Imagine. We cannot be reminded of death constantly like that. It affects our ability to function in the world. Terror management theory says that we continually repress that fear to make productivity possible. But that elicits the question of how do we repress it? Well, TMT suggests three things that can reduce the death anxiety. Culture, self-esteem, and relationships. Cultural worldviews provide a shared lens for viewing life and reality that A. gives life meaning and significance. B. is perceived as permanent and enduring over time. C establishes the standards of value for individuals within the culture to live up to, and D. provides some hope of immortality. Culture usually attempts to rid death anxiety by suggesting or directly promising immortality. Immortality can have two meanings in this context, literal or symbolic. A culture offers literal immortality if it promises continued existence after biological death, or if it promises the erasure of death. Usually religion has this role, though other aspects of culture do it more implicitly. Symbolic immortality is usually expressed as belonging to, or being part of, something greater than oneself that will endure long after one's physical death. Having a book written about you, pushing one's country into a better position, or even love can be a version of symbolic immortality. Culture can give symbolic control to certain parts of the world that are ambiguous or apathetic. Bad crops and natural disasters are often explained by displeased gods, because the alternative is that nature is uncaring and indifferent to the plight of man. And for early man especially, we needed cultural explanations to save our sanity. Unfortunately, different cultures have different explanations, and being aware of a different explanation really calls our own into question, because if our own view was the right one, why would alternatives exist? 
There are actually some political ramifications of this in what is known as the political worldview defense hypothesis. Several studies have shown that death awareness causes those who are more conservative to be more conservative and those who are liberal to be more liberal. So, if our worldview is threatened, we might double down on it. However, we could also rely on another defense. Self-esteem is another repressive factor for death anxiety. This seems to be due to the fact that self-esteem is often tied to cultural narratives around heroism, and heroes are often depicted without the fear of death. But how to gain this buffer through self-esteem varies from person to person, though death awareness will often result in a bolstering of their self-esteem. For example, those whose self-esteem is contingent on their driving ability drive faster and perform more risky maneuvers on a driving simulator, whereas those who value physical fitness increase their intentions to spend time in the gym. Lastly, relationships, especially close ones, also help reduce death anxiety by reminding one that they are cherished and that they are contributing to society. There are three pillars to the understanding of terror management theory. The death thought accessibility hypothesis, the mortality salience hypothesis, and the anxiety buffer hypothesis. It follows that if culture, self-esteem, and relationships buffer against anxiety, then challenges to them should increase the accessibility of death-related thoughts. This is called the death thought accessibility hypothesis. Slightly related to, but different from the death thought accessibility hypothesis, is the mortality salience hypothesis, which states, if culture, self-esteem, and relationships buffer death anxiety, explicitly reminding people of their death, in other words, making their awareness of mortality more salient, will increase people's defense of their worldviews, self-esteem, and attachments. Then there's the anxiety buffer hypothesis, which states, if those psychological structures protect us against death anxiety, then strengthening those structures should reduce susceptibility to existential and regular anxiety. Keep in mind that people vary in how much they rely on self-esteem, their cultural worldview, and or relationships to buffer death anxiety. And generally, there are multiple potential strategies one can use to reduce it, but once the anxiety-producing threat is addressed, further defense strategies aren't usually needed. So if our defenses are weakened, what then? What happens if our cultural worldview, relationships, and self-esteem all get fractured momentarily? Luckily, we have developed two types of strategies to further defend us from death anxiety. Proximal defenses are usually ways we deal with death anxiety in a direct and seemingly rational way. You can push the thought out of your head, use temporal distancing, deny the risk, or do life-promoting activities like exercising. Distal defenses usually occur after proximal defenses have been used. They'll usually be aimed at maintaining one's worldview and or self-esteem. We'll look into a few more defenses later, but they usually fall within these two categories. Again, the goal is not to get rid of these defenses. They are there for a reason. We can't lead productive lives if we're constantly worried about something we have little control over. Now that doesn't mean that we should never contemplate death. Healthy awareness of death can do us good, as we'll see later. But let's move our attention to the evidence for terror management theory. There's quite a bit of research on terror management theory. A meta-analysis by Burke and colleagues found that mortality salience yielded moderate effects on self-esteem and cultural worldviews, reinforcing their connection with one another. Another study by Harmon Jones et al. found that those with high self-esteem did not respond to death awareness with increased worldview defense, solidifying TMT as an explanatory factor for self-esteem. A literature review by Hayes, Scheimel, and Arndt found that death thought accessibility as a construct had been vital to terror management theory, while still acknowledging some theoretical tweaks to be made. Those are just a few of the hundreds of studies on terror management theory, but it's not without its critiques. Some researchers have suggested that the effects of many of these experiments are the result of something other than death itself, such as regular anxiety or pain. But TMT researchers responded by saying that a lot of these alternative explanations have linguistic or experiential connections to death, reinforcing the idea that death awareness is responsible. An alternative theory to terror management theory is meaning maintenance that suggested that the disruption of meaning causes anxiety. But terror management theory researchers responded by saying that only certain meanings require maintenance, namely those that are important to an individual's anxiety-buffering worldview. 
TMT does not have an explanation for why older people have less anxiety despite being more aware of their death. Terror management theory also does not seem to have much to say on genuine acceptance of death, though a growth model was recently proposed. There's a lot to this model, but it might be nice to see how we can apply it to our own lives. For one, we can try to improve our self-esteem. We can do this by doing activities we're good at, using believable positive affirmations, learning to accept compliments, and by practicing self-compassion. Next, we can strengthen our relationships. Death anxiety is present even in social death, and so maintaining healthy connections with others is pretty important. Radical acceptance is a technique used in ACT therapy. At the time of writing, there's no immortality potion, and so we have to accept that we're going to die. But acceptance doesn't mean liking, but just not going against reality. And by doing that, you can focus on what you can change and accept what you cannot. And then there's memento mori. We can practice a healthy awareness of death in a way that doesn't become overwhelming. Mortality awareness can motivate us towards life-promoting activities, and that's not a bad thing. It helps us look at our priorities and rearrange them in a more beneficial manner. Death awareness even helps encourage good acts. And meditating on death similarly assists one to realize experientially that thinking about death is not the same thing as death. Read some existential philosophy. You're not alone in your death anxiety. Every person has experienced that at some point, and many have even written about it. Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning is a good start, and Albert Camus' Myth of Sisyphus is one of my favorites. And then there's Irvin Yalom, who's another existential author with several books on the subject. None of them solve the problem of death, but they can help reinforce that worldview structure in a helpful way that reduces anxiety about death. Lastly, terror management theory helps us understand when we are the most manipulable. Knowing that, our awareness can reduce the likelihood that we are manipulated. For example, if I know that being reminded of death is more likely to cause me to needlessly buy products, then I'll keep that awareness and stop myself. I can also be more aware of how my self-esteem affects my medical decisions when I'm aware of death. And, if I know that death awareness can influence my political behaviors, I might be wary when politicians start to use mortality-based language. We need to use the awareness of death and the accompanying experience of anxiety as a sign to pause and think through how it might influence us. We looked at terror management theory today. We discussed why we need a buffer to death anxiety, the three pillars of TMT, evidence and critiques of TMT, and some practical implications. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, as they really do help. Thank you for watching. A man traveling across a field encountered a tiger. He fled, the tiger after him. Coming to a precipice, he caught hold of the root of a wild vine and swung himself down over the edge. The tiger sniffed at him from above. Trembling, the man looked down to where, far below, another tiger was waiting to eat him. Only the vine sustained him. Two mice, one white and one black, little by little, started to gnaw away at the vine. The man saw a luscious strawberry near him. Grasping the vine with one hand, he plucked the strawberry with the other. How sweet it tasted.